Welcome, Masco Nation, and everybody who else is viewing this. Um, this is this week's episode of Higher Side Chats, uh, where we come together as a team, as a network, as friends to share ideas, be entertained, and hopefully learn something new. Today we have a very special guest joining us. We have Edward Zia. He's joining us all the way from Australia. Edward, how are you doing today? Colin and to your wonderful team and our friends across the world. It's an honor to be here and thank you. Um, I gotta say it's pretty crazy times with Corona, but I'm glad it's all coming to its conclusion. Absolutely. So are we hopefully sooner rather than later, but safety is obviously the main concern here. So Edward, I know some people, everybody who's talked to me has probably heard about you and your posts and everything because I try to share that as much as possible. But for those who maybe don't know too much about you, could you give us a little bit of an insight about kind of who you are, what kind of makes you tick? Yeah, so um, in terms of what we do is um, influencers on LinkedIn and we help people around the world become master persuaders and influencers. Um, my wife and I, Lassie, both um, work in the business helping everyone. And it's pretty awesome. And a very, very long time ago, I was a very long time ago, I'm an old guy. I was an Australian army veteran. Once upon a time, I used to work on, you know, special secret projects with the Australian government. And then, yeah, I got, got injured very badly. And it sort of just led me through all these different events in life to this moment now where I'm, yeah, I help people become master persuaders and entrepreneurs and influencers. That's very cool. So coming from that background of yours, and I know you said that you got injured as well. I mean, the injury, not so much, but coming from that military background, how does that translate over to being, I guess, more so, I wouldn't say office life, but more the corporate style? It actually translates over very well because, um, and I'm very lucky, veterans, like a lot of ex-police, even ex-health and military, um, unless you're suffering from really bad PTSD or something, they generally are very successful in corporate uh, because what it is is that you know, a military policing sort of background, it gives you that discipline and consistency. So when you're doing your own thing, you've kind of got that leg up on a lot of people. And just so I know, I know a lot of ex-police and veterans, very successful corporates are in business. So um, veterans either tend to go one way. They either get really successful, they wind up homeless. I've done both. I started off homeless and then I uh, did the rise. So um, yeah, veterans tend to have that extreme type of experience. You either take mm -hmm. off or you just crash and burn. So I've done both, so I know the feeling. So, well, you can have both sides of the spectrum then. It kind of helps, yeah, out so, it seems like. <laughs> yeah. Well, I know the crash and burn side more than the successful end of the spectrum, but I'm catching up on the successful end of the spectrum. But I suppose the point is, is um, yeah, it, that military policing background gives you that, uh, gives you that consistent, and also you get used to BS as well. For example, Corona, yes, mm -hmm. it's bothered me, but it hasn't impacted me as much as most people because you know, you've got that built-in resilience you get from those sort of crazy, um, you know, uh, combat conditions and that sort of thing. Sure, that makes perfect sense. And I mean, even from the part where you said crash and burn and then you're working your way towards the successful side of things, um, the way I like to look at things is you can't really learn something that you already know. So you have to fail to be able to find out how to not fail. If you're going to fail and you look at it in a way that you can learn from it, then I feel like that's how you start moving your way up. Um, so, I mean, you kind of let us in, you wanted to kind of instruct people how to be master influencers. I guess, what kind of pointed you into that direction? What kind of got you into that? Well, whatever me, I used to be more of a local, so I'm for the wonderful audience around the world, I'm based in Sydney, Australia. And I used to be more of a local business coach. So around Sydney, I had a little bit of a following, but beyond my, my city limits, no one knew who I was, other than the odd client interstate. Sure. And what happened was I originally started, I had a few friends getting a LinkedIn nice and early and they sort of said, Hey Ed, we're kicking butt over here. And what happened was I went, I sort of moved on from Facebook and went into LinkedIn and very quickly I just took off on the platform. So I could never quite take off on Facebook, which is another conversation. Mm -hmm. But the moment I took my ideas and put them into LinkedIn, I pretty much instantly took off. This was about one and a half years ago. And what happened, Colin, was that as I took off on LinkedIn, I then kind of went from marketing coach to influencer coach very quickly because people like, Ed, how are you doing it? Mm -hmm. So the success I had on LinkedIn, 
naturally change my whole business and my direction. It's just an evolution, you know? And then people are going to use you for what you're good at, not what you're average at. That's true. Very true. So, I mean, there's the marketing and then there's the influencer side. Do you see that there's much of like a drastic difference between the marketing side of things versus the influencer side of things? Or do you feel like they really mesh together well? Oh, they, they, of, of course they mesh beautifully, but they are slightly two different things because marketing, when you say the word marketing, it's more about driving traffic to a website or advertising a company in a brand. Whereas you would say influence the marketing is more of a subset of marketing where you more talk about the personal brand, the individual, and how to catapult that person or identity to have a massive following. And then, of course, you get into then sub issues like monetizing the following and that sort of thing. Of course, of course. So um, when it comes to the influencing and marketing side of things, um, I guess, what would you say is one of the biggest struggles um, starting out? And obviously, if you don't have the following or any of that, what would you say is one of the biggest struggles that there is that you have to kind of overcome in order to really start pushing yourself towards the successful side of things? It's exactly what you said is um, when you start out and you don't have a following, the hardest thing in an influencer journey is getting your original following. That's one of the hardest things that you'll do because I'll give you an example, and I'm very grateful for this and big thank you to our fans across the world. You know, I couldn't do it without you. I'm now growing at about some nights I'll grow 500 followers a day, right? Um, I used to grow 10 followers a week on Facebook. So I remember I used to grow 10 followers a week. One, I remember one week on Facebook, I grew 100 followers in a week on Facebook. And I'm like, man, I'm awesome, right? <laughs> and now if I grew 100 followers in a, in a day now, I'd freak out and I'd be going through my LinkedIn account, covered in sweat, figuring out what the problem was, <laughs> right? So, so, but it's easy for me to say that. But the problem is, and this is what I say to anyone, is... The hardest bit of an influencer journey is the first year because that's when you're building the skills and you're building your base following. So after you, you do the influencer journey after about a year, the second year is honestly a lot easier. The first year was a nightmare. And also you start getting trolled, people you once thought you were friends or you abused you. So it's that one year, you know, you got to deal with, you know, building your following, trolls, mm -hmm. abusers. Um, sure. And also you meet a lot of people who you think are your friends and then they all take advantage of you, right? Of course. So... But after year one, you kind of get savvy to that. And you can't, you, you start getting, after about a year, you start getting sort of in the zone. You know, you know who's taking advantage of you, you know who's not. So you sort of know how to play the game, if you know what I'm saying. Right, right. No, that, that makes a lot of sense. Um, and I feel like the hardest part is probably getting started, especially now that we're in a world of everything being so digital and being video. And I mean, me personally, I do photography and videography on the side of here. So I'm very comfortable behind a camera. Um, so for those people who might not want to be on the camera, would you say that actually getting to the point where you're being filmed is one of the more difficult steps or would you think? Yeah. That yeah. And, and just on that note, um, not so much on LinkedIn, but I, I originally got over my camera shyness on Facebook, right? Okay. But whether you're doing it on Facebook, LinkedIn or YouTube makes no difference. So but I had a lot of problem with camera shyness at the start. Mm -hmm. uh, it's hard. So I won't lie to you, getting over camera shyness is really hard, but you have to do it. So ultimately, if you, if you want to be a successful influencer, you have to get good at being on camera. There's no if, buts, or maybes about it. You have to get used sure. to being on camera. So what I say to people is, if you want to be a successful influencer, um, you, you might get some help. You know, you might get a coach, you might get some formal training but you need to get over that quickly. Because it's, it's sort of like this. Um, let's say you want to lose weight, but you have mm -hmm. a fear of the gym, right? You've got a problem. You kind of, and uh, gym fear is another example. When people, uh, I do this too. When people, let's say, overweight or really unhealthy, the uh -huh. fear of going to the gym is terrifying. I've been through that. Sure. So it's like gym fear or cameras. Camera. My best advice is, um, like, if you've got, if you got gym fear, this is an issue for a PT. That's what I did. The PT will help mm. you get for it, right? Because you're not going to the gym on your own. You got your PT there. Uh -huh. And it's like camera shyness, get a coach or yeah, me or whoever, get a coach to help you. And then that way will catapult you into that winning. Awesome. No, I mean, that, that really does make a lot of sense. I mean, if you want to be an influencer, especially in a digital world, you have to have your face on the camera. I mean, that to me seems like it's the only way to go about it. Um, so to try and shift gears a little bit over to the, uh, 
touchy subject for some, the pandemic going on right now. Yeah. Um, have you noticed that it really had an influence or an effect on any of the work that you've been doing? Oh, a, a, a radical difference. So in terms of my business structure and our products, mm -hmm. no difference. Like our, our structure, we were already like we already started going online two years ago. So our business structure is actually set beautifully for the times, right? Mm -hmm. However, what we talk about with people absolutely change because the first two weeks of Corona, I was working 20 hour days because I was just on the phone to our hundreds of clients across the world. Right. Ed, sure. and there were two conversations, Ed, it's a disaster or Ed, I'm winning so much. Right. So right. no one, Corona changed everything. It kind of polarized people into the losing category and the winning category. And if I have a client in the losing category, my job is to help them get in the winning category. If I have a client in the winning category, I have to make them, I have to help them maximize it. So it's been a huge change of the world. And I, I'm not the only one, I'm doing this by the way, but Corona is very comparable to World War II or 9-11. It's that moment which absolutely transforms the world and the GFC, mm -hmm. for example, the global financial crisis. So Corona is, you know, a watershed moment where people, mm -hmm. me included, say, you know, we're talking about the post-Corona world. Like the old world has been destroyed. The new world is now the post-Corona world. And we're already talking about what are we going to do post-Corona? What right. will the post-Corona world look like? So the world is, again, like 9-11. There's before 9-11 and after 9-11. There's two different worlds on that, you know, right. fragment. In time. And it's kind of how you're going to approach going into it. Um, no, that kind of leads me to what I was going to ask you next is, have you had to do much preparation or have you been gearing yourself up towards what the new world is going to be like? How like, I guess the new normal is what I've been referring to it as. Yeah. Yeah. So the new normal or the post Corona world, uh, the new normal is good, right? Um, absolutely. So for us, for example, um, we, and we, we were very lucky to figure this out because again, I've got some really good, I'm surrounded by some very intelligent people. I've got some top mentors. And mm -hmm. I also work directly with LinkedIn and Microsoft. So I get the inside scoop as well. Big thank you to LinkedIn and Microsoft. I love you guys, right? Absolutely. So great people, by the way, LinkedIn and Microsoft. Anyway, but what, 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 what we realized about six, seven weeks ago at the start of Corona, we realized that the old world's gone. It's not going back. Mm -hmm. But we have to become really powerful influencers or online, right? right. Um, if, if we cruise through Corona, we're going to lose the business right? And the correct thinking, which obviously worked out was if we go hard though, we're going to come out of this winners. And for example, I'll use an example before Corona, I was growing at not kidding about 50, maybe 50 followers a day. Uh huh. Seven weeks later, I'm growing at 300 followers a day, Sunday, 500 followers a day because the changes we put in six, seven, you know, seven to eight weeks ago are now all kicking in. So in terms of Corona, um, we couldn't have hoped for a better result during Corona. It's been, um, it's been incredible and life changing. Awesome. So on the flip side and away from, I guess, the normal work and everyday life, how would you say you've been able to deal with Corona and all the changes that you've had to make personally in order to keep yourself in a good positive mindset? Yeah, well, what's very important, and I remember our conversation off camera as well. Um, and I say this to anyone listening who's, you know, definitely taken the sharp end of the stick during Corona. And I'm very, and again, uh, you know, I'm a tough guy, but I'm not, I'm not a Terminator, right? You know, I right. feel emotion too, right? Um, but what happened to me is originally at the start of Corona, I freaked out too. However, one hour of motivational materials a day. So I'm very big on that. Um, it's paid off, obviously. So I say to everyone, anyone watching this, you need to watch at least, oh, be it, you know, when I say watch, be it, whatever you're into, be it you're a reader, you're, uh -huh. you're a listener, you're a YouTuber, but you need to consume one hour of motivational materials a day. So in simple terms, like I'll use a very simple, if you're a Christian like myself, li to me, listening, I'm not into, I'm personally, as much as I love Jesus, I'm a Christian, I'm not into the happy go clapping music. Right. But if you're into the happy clappy music, you know, lap it up. Um, you know, if reading poetry an hour a day is your thing, please do it. So the point is you've got to have an hour of consuming positive. And I mean, when I say positive, positive to you. Right. Right. Positive to you materials a day. And that's how you get through it. Awesome. Um, obviously I see you going around. And one thing that I know myself and a lot of people like to do is just kind of get out in nature, um, go out and walk. Um, what would you say are some of the big things that 
you have found that you were able to do to kind of, I guess, in one way or another, escape um, from everything going on, from work, from the stressors, just to kind of reboot yourself? Yeah. Well, two things is the nature. So I live in, um, just for the sake of our global audience, I live in a pl- I live in Sydney, which is like the biggest city of Australia. Um, and I always say to my wonderful, you know, North American friends, Sydney, imagine it's sort of like Miami and New York fused together is the best way I try and explain Sydney. It's like a okay. big side sort of area uh-huh. with a, the fast pace and technology of New York, if that makes sense. Right. Sure. So, Stick them together and that's kind of what you get and fill it full of British. And, and again, there's lots of Americans in Sydney, so it has that experience, right? Um, but what I did was is that I live in a very beautiful forest. So I live miles from the beach, but I live in a very beautiful forested area. So right where I live, we've got beautiful forests everywhere. So my family and I, um, the way it works in Australia is you're allowed to go out for exercise or buying food or working. So Mm-hmm. We can legally and safely go out as a family if we're exercising. So we go into nature to exercise. Okay. Um, in the times, like let's say it's poor weather, like it's raining, cats and dogs outside. What we do is we do a lot of exercises at home. And the other thing is I love watching cool stuff on YouTube. So I'm, I'm a real sort of get the phone. I'm a huge YouTube <laughs> fan. So, you know, I watch all the crazy, a lot of, I watch a lot of the crazy, um, cool stuff on YouTube, a lot of gaming stuff, a lot of right winger stuff, all that, uh-huh. all those funny videos you find on YouTube. Sure. Sure. Keeps you positive, keeping things lighthearted for you. Yeah. Yeah. So YouTube, so I, don't, I don't like TV. I think TV is full of fake news. I don't know about you, but I'm kind of sick of the, so I like, so YouTube's kind of my, you know, I also watch things like, you know, South Park, American Dad, Family Guy, all the sure. stuff that's good for the soul. Oh yeah. <laughs> in, in one way or another. <laughs> <laughs> Um, awesome. So I guess to kind of wrap things up a little bit, is there anything that you would say moving forward, um, to the new world or the post Corona world that we're going to be going to, are there any tips or bits of advice that you might have for people on gearing back up, whether it's people who might've been remote already have been doing a lot of things online already, or maybe people who have been forced into being remote and are now working from home and don't have any of that interaction. Do you have any tips or a bit of advice for them that might be good for kind of getting prepared to going back? Yeah. My number one advice is, is, and and this experience differs for everyone. So I say this subjectively, but get into LinkedIn. So if you're an employee and you're building your career, get into LinkedIn, build your connections, read cool stuff. If you're like a entrepreneur business owner like me, build your personal brand because LinkedIn is not just a good marketing platform. There's a lot of cool stuff on there. So a lot of my actual motivation comes from reading cool stuff on LinkedIn. Okay. Uh, The second point I want to say is, um, depending on your health, um, make sure you're looking after yourself. And again, I'm not a health guy, so I go, I kind of, you know, can't say too much chips. I don't know what I'm talking about, but what I will say, you know, if you need to get a personal trainer, if you need a nutritionist, if you're overweight and you're sick, deal with those issues. So maybe you have to, again, maybe you have to see a nutritionist. You go, you got to see a personal trainer. You know what you need, get the professional help. And the third thing I will say is again, that I will bring it back to the positive materials. You've got to build your own resilience because, um, you know, and looking back on it, we weathered, my wife and I weathered, we weathered Corona very well, right? I think we did a great job with how we handled Corona. Mm -hmm. Um, And that's that's not because we're, you know, again, we're like, you know, cyborgs from the future. It's more (laughs) a matter of, it's not that we're awesome. It's that, all the positive stuff we did before Corona that came in to protect us. So whether like, who knows, there could be a Corona aftershock. That is very possible. Right. Sure. We don't know. We don't know if this thing's gone away. There could be an aftershock. The, the strain could mutate. Right. So regardless of what's going to happen, make sure that you're consuming the positive materials now. So if we have milk and honey times going ahead, great. If there's an aftershock, you're prepared for that. Sure. Sure. No, that makes perfect sense. And I think it's great advice too. Um, being able to be prepared for something, even if it does come back, whether it's that or if something else bad comes, um, you're at least prepared for that on either side. Um, yeah. No, I want to say uh, thank you very much for taking a little bit of the time out today. Um, I think it'll be very beneficial for people. Um, definitely think they should start watching more of your stuff. I found it very helpful. It's uh, <laughs> positive, um, especially even when you're just walking around or getting to see for some of us over here, 
uh, in the United States, getting to see some of the landscapes that you've been just kind of showing when you're walking around is really cool. Um, but no, I think your advice has been great. I want to thank you again for taking some time to talk today. Um, and uh, I mean, do you have anything else that you'd like to add before we uh, kind of sign off here? No, I just want to say a big thank you. I really appreciate you, Colin. Big shout out to our viewers. And I just want to say as well, uh, you know, don't be a stranger. Um, if you're seeing this video and you want to connect with me, um, please feel free to connect with me on LinkedIn. But just say in the message that Colin Lindstrom is very handsome. Okay. <laughs> So if you just connect with me, I won't accept. But if you say connect, Colin Lidstrom is very handsome, I will gladly accept your connection request. That sounds fair. <laughs> all right. Well, thanks again. And Nesco Nation and all of our viewers from this today, just like always, feel free to like, comment, share. Um, and if you do have any ideas of people or things that you'd like us to talk about in future episodes, feel free to let us know. But other than that, stay healthy, stay happy, and have a great rest of your day.